This is the fourth video on chemical bonding in the A-level syllabus. In the past three lessons, we have looked at how to draw dot and cross diagrams for covalent molecules. And from there, we can obtain the Lewis structure. And from the Lewis structure, we can know the um, shape and bond angles in a covalent molecule. In this video, we're going to look at a concept known as polarity. Now to discuss polarity, we need to bring in a concept that we have learned earlier in video 1. The concept is electronegativity. Just to recap, electronegativity refers to the ability of an atom to attract the shed pair of electrons in a chemical bond towards itself. So when two atoms of different electronegativities form a covalent bond, right? a covalent bond means that there is a shed pair of electrons, one from each atom. When the two atoms are of different electronegativities, what is going to happen is this. We have learned that chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So chlorine is going to pull the shed pair of electrons closer to itself. And electrons are negatively charged. So when chlorine pulls the shed pair of electrons closer to itself, it's going to have slightly more electrons than it would have if the electrons in the bond were equally shared. Okay, so it's going to have slightly more electrons. It would have slightly more negative charge. So we say that it has a partial negative charge. Now the reverse is true. Because the shared pair of electrons have been put away from hydrogen, now hydrogen would have a little less electrons than it would have if the um, electrons were shared equally. So hydrogen would now acquire a slight positive charge. So what happens is that when there's unequal sharing of electrons, there is a dipole, dipole meaning a plus and a minus being set up. So we call this a dipole or bond moment. And when a bond has a dipole moment, we say that the bond is polar. Now the opposite is also true when you have two atoms of the same electronegativities. What happens is that now the shared pair of electrons will be equally shared between the two atoms. So therefore, there is no plus or minus. There's no partial charges form. We say that there's no dipole moment. The bond is non-polar. So polarity um, can be applied to covalent bonds. When there's unequal sharing of electrons in a covalent bond, we say that the bond is polar. When there's equal sharing of electrons in a covalent bond, we say that the bond is non-polar. So now that we have learned how to determine whether a bond is polar or non-polar, we will see how we can then apply it to the entire molecule to determine whether the molecule is polar or non-polar. I will illustrate with two examples before we go through the rules as to how to determine whether a molecule is polar or non-polar. Now, the first example would be ammonia. If we look at the Lewis structure of ammonia or if we look at the shape of ammonia, ammonia has a trigonal planar shape. So ammonia looks like this. So next, we need to look at the covalent bonds in this molecule. The covalent bonds are your nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. Are they polar? The answer is yes, because nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So you will find that um, all the bonds have a net dipole moment. Next, to determine whether a molecule is polar or non-polar, we need to check whether all these individual bond moments, do they cancel out? such that there's no net dipole moment or do they not cancel out so there is a net dipole moment. In the case of ammonia, you will find that the dipole moments, they do not cancel out. So the overall molecule has a net, has a residual um, by dipole moment and for molecules with a non-zero dipole moment, we therefore 
say that the whole molecule is a polar molecule. Now the second example that I'll use would be carbon tetrachloride, CCL4. Now for CCL4, if you draw the Lewis structure and you find the shape, it has a tetrahedral shape. Okay, so it looks something like this. To know whether the molecule is polar, we need to first look at the covalent bonds. Um, the covalent bonds, are they polar? Again, the answer is yes, because chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. So each bond over here is actually a polar bond. So again, to determine whether carbon tetrachloride is polar or non-polar, we need to check this individual bond moments. Do they actually cancel out? Now, in this very case, they do cancel out. And as a result of that, carbon tetrachloride has no net dipole moment. So therefore, we say that carbon tetrachloride is non-polar. So let's go through the rules now. How do we determine whether a molecule is polar or non-polar? We say that the molecule is polar when the bond moments or the dipole moments do not cancel out. So that will give rise to a net dipole moment. Now, many students will find it very hard to see whether the dipole moments cancel out or not. So one tip is this, to imagine the central atom as an object okay and to imagine the bond moments as forces or vectors illustrating the forces acting on the central atom okay so by applying the forces by applying the vectors if your central atom is displaced from its original position that means that the molecule is polar because there's a net force acting on your central atom if the um the central atom remains, is not displaced from its original position. What it means is that the vectors actually, the forces actually cancel out. There's no net force, so the central atom remains where it is, and the entire molecule is therefore non-polar. So if you imagine in the case of carbon tetrachloride, I have uh, an object where carbon is, and I apply the forces in a tetrahedral fashion. Okay, if you analyze it using your vectors, you will find that the forces actually cancel out. There's no net force and your carbon atom will remain where it is. So once again, how do we decide whether a molecule is polar? We must first check the bonds, the covalent bonds in the molecule. Why is that so? Because it, once the bond is not polar, all right, then the, there's no point looking at the molecule because there is, will definitely be no net dipole moment. A famous example would be your carbon-hydrogen bond. Now, carbon and hydrogen have very, very similar electronegativity. So a carbon-hydrogen bond is non-polar. So whenever you see a hydrocarbon, regardless of how big it is, immediately we can say that it's non-polar. Regardless of the shape, we can say that it's non-polar. Why? Because the bond is non-polar to start with. Okay? However, if the bond is polar, then we need to go on to the second step. The second step is to determine whether the bond moments or whether the dipole moments cancel out by considering the shape of the molecule. There are some very convenient generalizations. This is very, very useful. Like I mentioned, all hydrocarbons are non-polar. Why? Because the bond is not, uh, is not polar to start with. The second generalization is this. If you see molecules with a lone pair on the central atom, 99% okay, of the time it is polar because the mo bond moments will no longer cancel out. For example, would be nitrogen. Nitrogen has a lone pair on its central atom, so you can be sure that the bond moments do not cancel out. There's one exception though. The exception is xenon tetrafluoride. So xenon tetrafluoride looks like this. It, if you draw the dot and cross diagram, it actually has a square planar shape. Square planar with 
a lone pair above and a lone pair below. So in this case, I, can, uh, I hope you can see that this, the shape of this molecule is highly symmetrical. Uh, when a molecule is highly symmetrical, there are many um, mirror planes, then in this case, your dipole moment will cancel out. So xenon tetrafluoride is non-polar. However, other than xenon tetrafluoride, as long as you see a lone pair on the central atom, uh, more likely than not, it is a polar molecule. Let us try now to determine whether um, each of these molecules here is polar or non-polar. For NO2, the structure looks like this. There's one, is, it is a radical. So in this case, um, I think it's also quite obvious that the bond moments do not cancel out. So this is a polar molecule. H2O, convenient generalization, as long as you see a lone pair on the central atom, it will definitely be polar. Okay, if you don't believe, you can uh, draw the bond moments and you'll see that it's definitely polar. Carbon dioxide, there. Okay, firstly, is the CO bond polar? Yes, the CO bond is polar because oxygen is more electronegative, so there is a bond moment. But if you can see, uh, the bond moments actually cancel each other out, so carbon dioxide is non-polar. Methane, CH4. Actually, I shouldn't have even drawn the structure of methane. Why? Because once again, if you see something made up of C and H, the bond itself is not even polar, so there's no point analyzing the shape of the molecule. Straight away, methane is non-polar. Ethane is non-polar. Propane, any alkanes, they are all non-polar. Okay? Ammonia, we have seen. Ammonia has the trigonal planar shape, and then it has a lone pair on the central atom, so the convenient generalization, it must be polar. PF5 has a trigonal bipyramidal shape, so in this case, again, is the bond polar? It is polar. Fluorine is highly electronegative. So you will have all these bond moments. But you can, if you can imagine the shape again, this is a highly symmetrical shape. So the bond moments actually do cancel out. And therefore, PF5 is a non-polar um, molecule. The last one will be chlorine trifluoride. Chlorine trifluoride have a T shape. So again, the convenient generalization, if you have lone pair on the central atom, it is very likely to be polar.